So Jamie, can you tell us more about what's involved with a total pancreatectomy and auto islet cell transplant? What's the operation like? Um, how long the patients are in the hospital? And what's the outcome? So clearly this is um, the most uh, complex pancreatic operation that we would offer. Uh, and it does involve taking out the entire pancreas, taking out most of the duodenum, most of that first portion of the small intestine. Uh, and in fact, also typically entails removal of the spleen from technical perspective, technical reasons. Uh, and it is a procedure that is um, an all day operation. Uh, and really the length of the operation is determined by how much scarring there's been around that pancreas and most of these kids have had a lot of scarring over the course of their disease process. After removal of the pancreas, uh, we have a local uh, islet facility that will then take the pancreas and isolate the islets uh, or the um, endocrine component uh, of the pancreas and then they will bring those islets back to us. It's a process that takes three to four hours for the isolation. And we'll then infuse them into the vein system that drains from the intestine up to the liver so that those islets will then set themselves up uh, and we expect them to hopefully survive within the liver to then start producing insulin over the course of time. In terms of the course um, after surgery, because this is a very complex operation, typically patients, children are in the hospital for about three weeks, uh, typically spending about a week in the intensive care unit and then uh, about two more weeks um, convalescing on the surgical floor and then the endocrinology floor where they get very specific uh, teaching from the perspective of glucose management because the islets are not gonna work right away. The islets typically take weeks to months to start producing insulin if they're going to work at all. They don't work in everyone. In terms of outcomes, the biggest outcome, the primary goal of that total pancreatectomy with islet autotransplantation uh, is in fact relief of the debilitation and improvement in quality of life. The outcomes in children are quite good. So over 90% of children that undergo a TPIAT will actually have freedom of opioid use, getting back to school, getting back to activities of daily living. So that's really a, a, uh, quite a success. The secondary goal is function of the islets. Uh, and in that context, typically uh, children actually have better outcomes than adults for reasons we don't quite understand uh, in terms of their islet function. Uh, but certainly about 40% of children will actually become insulin independent over the course of their post-operative time period. And then another approximately 30% will have partial islet function or partial graft function uh, and will um, require some insulin uh, but really not full uh, insulin needs. Okay, you mentioned insulin. Are there any other treatments or medications these patients will need? There uh, are certainly many other medications that a patient will need after a TPIAT, total pancreatectomy with islet autotransplantation. So certainly relief of pain is not instantaneous. Many of these patients come into operation, most of them come in on chronic opioids, and so really they'll need medication uh, weaning over time from a, a pain perspective, so their opioids uh, will take months, often months to uh, come off of. And in fact, because we're not replacing the exocrine or the digestive component of the pancreas, patients will need long-term pancreas enzyme replacement therapy. Uh, and that's for life, that's lifelong. All patients do leave the hospital on exogenous insulin, so insulin that is being given to them until those islets will begin to work, if they begin to work.